the patient experience and consumer engagement team here at the ACI. And this webinar is being uh, sent to you in conjunction with Health Consumers New South Wales. Next to me I have Mary Potter, who is an ACI consumer member and a Health Consumers New South Wales board member. Also in the room we have Anthony Brown, who is the Executive Director of Health Consumers New South Wales, and he'll be online a little later to talk you through a little bit about um, Health Consumers New South Wales and, and educate a bit, you a bit more about consumer representatives in New South Wales. We're going to start this webinar by giving you a little bit of information about what the ACI does, how we're positioned in the New South Wales health system, and what consumers do in our organisation and the value that they add to the work that we do. I'll just go to the next slide. So firstly, I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we work on, the Kamaragal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to any elders past and present and extend that respect to any other Aboriginal people who are present here today. The ACI really recognises the importance of engaging with Aboriginal people and communities in the work that we do. Before we commence, we do just need to go through a little bit of housekeeping around the webinar. Um, so I might just hand over to Anthony to explain uh, a little bit more around the webinar functions. Okay, thanks Sarah. I know you can't see me, but I am here. Just wanted to let people know, if you're joining us um, over the internet, uh, please make sure that you've clicked, um, if you're listening to us from your computer, click the button mark mic and speakers. Now if people are having difficulty hearing us, then you can also call in and listen over the phone while watching us online. And if you're doing that, then please click the telephone option that's um, displayed um, in your uh, options box that you'll see on your screen. Um, if you have any questions, we'd really love to hear from you. Now, during the, the course of the webinar, uh, you'll actually be on mute, so we won't hear anything that you have to say. But if you, you'll see there's a chat box in the options box. Um, and I really invite people, if you've got questions, to please type a message there with any questions or comments and we'll pick them up during the webinar. We can see the chats that come through and we'll pick them up and we'll attempt to answer them during the webinar. This is also the place to um, ask any questions if you're having any technical difficulties around connecting up or you can't hear or anything like that. Please use that chat box um, there to ask any technical questions as, any, any, as well as any questions of the presenters. Thank you, Anthony. So moving to the next slide, as we mentioned, this webinar is for health consumers that are currently working with ACI and for those that may be interested in joining us in the future. We really welcome those who have joined us here today, but the beauty of this webinar is that it's being taped. So it will be a resource for ACI consumers that can't attend today and any who will join us in the future. So we really hope it will be a valuable experience for you all. So firstly, what do we mean by health consumers? Those of you that are, are currently members will have your own ideas about what that actually means. But the official de definition is from Health Consumers New South Wales, and that is that they're people who use health services as well as their family and carers. And that's not just people who are using health services right now, but it's those that may be using those services in the future as well. So essentially we all are health consumers. The important distinction between health consumers and health consumer representatives is that health consumer representatives are there to specifically um, point out the consumer perspective, the consumer experience and the consumer views about how um, health services and, and, and health system can be improved and better meet the needs of people now and into the future. What's important is that although anyone is a health consumer, consumer representatives are those that can actually sit at the table and speak from the consumer perspective and leave any other roles and any other responsibilities and any other hats to one side. Um, so it's someone who can sit on a committee, take part in a project or attend an event and voice that consumer perspective. I might just invite Mary to make any comments about that. But yes, I, I think that's, that's true. Uh, Probably you know, one of the most important things is to 
know that you have freedom to say what you feel needs to be said because you have been invited to participate. Lovely. Thank you, Mary. I have a couple of slides to go through and I will go through them relatively quickly but they will be available as a resource for you to access after this event and they will be available on our website, the ACI website as well. But essentially, um, cons health consumers in the ACI can get involved in a number of different ways and their role is essentially um, dependent on the specific network, task force or committee that they might be involved in or the project that they're working on. But part of that role might be to attend regular meetings, um, noting of course that consumers have their own lives and that you're not expected to attend every single meeting, um, but it is an important opportunity to ensure that that meeting does keep the consumer perspective and the consumer voice um, at the heart of what it does. We really encourage you to contribute your views um, as a user of the health system or a potential user or as someone who's involved in your community or in a non-government organisation. Please get involved in discussions. As Neri said, don't be scared to share your perspective, share your opinions as that's really what you're there to provide. You're able to join working groups which might involve taking on a much meatier role and um, actually doing some of the work that's involved in the project depending on your expertise, your interest and your skill set. And we really encourage you to be the expert in your condition, be the expert in your experience and tell us what it's like to actually be a user and receiver or um, member of the New South Wales health community and the New South Wales public health system. So just a little bit of a um, map of the New South Wales health system. And so when we talk about New South Wales health system, this is what we mean. And this might be slightly different to what you as a consumer consider to be the New South Wales health system because um, your thinking is probably not so structured around um, government and jurisdictional and the like. So when we talk about the New South Wales health system at the ACI, we're really talking about New South Wales public health services and services that and facilities that are funded by the New South Wales government. This slide may become out of date over time as the New South Wales health system is a moving um, beast of different services and arrangements. But essentially where the ACI currently sits in the New South Wales health system is as one of the pillars of the uh, New South Wales health, health system and we provide a really specific set of um, functions and activities to help the health services and the facilities that actually provide the health services to the consumers. And we support the um, New South Wales Ministry of Health, the Minister of Health and the Secretary of Health. So you can see that the ACI is just circled in yellow um, to the right of the screen under the pillars. So the New South Wales health system, the public health system that I'm referring to, currently has what we call 15 local health districts. A local health district is really an area or an amalgamation of local health services. And those health services might include hospitals, community health services, uh, mental health, drug and alcohol services, um, outpatient clinics or ambulatory clinics. So therefore, when you're not actually in the hospital and you're receiving um, day, day procedure or day um, services from uh, doctors and nurses and other clinicians in the field. There's also three specialty health networks, which is essentially just a network of health services for a particular population. And in New South Wales currently that's Justice Health and Forensic Mental Health, Sydney Children's Hospital Network and St Vincent's um, Hospital. And then we have primary health networks, which used to be called Medicare Locals and prior to that were the GP divisions of general practice. And that's essentially general practice and other what we call primary health care providers coming together under a network model as well. And ACI really works with across those um, settings and those services. So we really hope to be able to touch the majority of health service provision in New South Wales. This is just a snapshot taken from the New South Wales Ministry of Health um, website, but essentially it just gives you an idea of the amount of health service provision that happens on a day-to-day -day basis and the number of patients, carers, consumers, family members and friends that are impacted and touched by the New South Wales health system and health services on a daily basis. So you can see that it's significant and therefore the role of consumers in actually informing and improving what we do as a health system is really important. So the main remit and aim of the ACI is to really bring clinicians, clinicians, consumers, carers, family members, managers and non-government organisations together to, to 
to understand how we can design and promote better healthcare for New South Wales. And it's really ensuring everyone has a seat at the table and is able to have a voice and share what they believe um, to be the ways in which we can improve healthcare in New South Wales. I won't go into this slide in too much detail except to let you know that the ACI approach really is aiming to balance this triangle and achieve the goals of this triangle and, and that is to meet the aims of ensuring that our consumers and our carers and our friends and our family and our staff have a good experience of healthcare in New South Wales that the ultimate health of the population is improved through our health service provision, but we are doing so within cost boundaries and trying to um, provide as an efficient service as possible. And in order to do that, because that triangle, achieving all those aims can be very challenging, is a cycle of innovation, evaluation. Essentially this just means trying. Trying, changing, trying, changing in order to try and develop a really effective and efficient service that is also better able to meet the needs of um, the users and providers of health services in New South Wales. The SEI has a number of different teams, divisions, functions, um, and they span uh, a variety of different goals around improving healthcare. Um, a lot of it might seem to be a little bit um, difficult to interpret just from reading the areas on the slide, but essentially it's a variety of teams working together um, in a coordinated way to try and add additional resources and support to those frontline clinicians and frontline health services that are working directly with consumers and patients. And if you're interested in knowing more about any of these specific areas, then you'll have my contact details at the end of this slide and you're welcome to get in touch with me or a member of the PEACE team to find out more. So the ACI is um, established in a network format and that is really where consumers, clinicians, managers, um, carers, families and non-government organisations come together around a specific interest area or a specific population group, specific health service area to try and work out what we can do better. But we also have teams and we also have specific projects that people can get involved in as well. So there are a variety of ways in which you might be able to contribute as a consumer representative. Some of that might be involved being actually appointed to a committee and attending committee meetings and working directly with those involved on the networks. But you also might be able to drop in, drop out of specific projects or attend specific working groups or get involved in just sharing your story and sharing your experience and we can then feed that through. So we really aim to provide a variety of mechanisms and opportunities for people to get involved to the extent that they are able and, and interested. This gives you another, this is another map that's probably likely to change and um, this again will be a reference but it essentially gives you an idea of the range of different networks, teams and areas in which consumers can get involved. So you might like to have a little look around. As I said, this is constantly added to as more networks come on board um, but the, the orange um, squares are specific networks that have consumers, carers and community members and the blue um, squares are uh, more corporate services or overarching functions that you can also get involved in. And so I'm part of the patient experience and consumer engagement team here at the ACI and we're really responsible for um, overarching support for all of the ACI and indeed the New South Wales health system to better um, engage consumers, meaningfully engage consumers and really try to understand and build in patient um, and carer experience into our improvement projects, our improvement work and any of our um, activities designed to improve healthcare in New South Wales. We're not a big team as you can see, but we really hope to be able to add additional support because we believe this is everyone's business. So our role is to really build capability and build people's understanding about how they can do more in this area. Um, and as I mentioned before, we really try to ensure that our uh, activities are matched against the interests and needs of consumers as well as that of our consumers. So we support our consumers in a variety of ways. We offer education and training such as this webinar. We provide reimbursement for any travel and other expenses that you incur. We provide refreshments in an accessible location. And if there's anything you need, then please ask. Um, we also have an ACI Consumer Council, which is the ACI's peak body to ensure that the board remains in touch and informed about um, the needs of our consumer members and about how we can better deliver um, consumer engagement at the ACI. And so there's 
more information there on the slide. Again, um, the consumer members have changed and you'll see that I'm no longer pregnant. <laughs> so I have a lovely little boy at home now. Um, so we will just move over to the interview now. So I'll hand over to Anthony and Mary, who's going to take you through a little bit more about their experience and um, the opportunities around being a consumer member at the ACI. So thank you, Mary and Anthony. Yes. Fantastic. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm oops, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I'm Anthony Brown. I'm Executive Director of Health Consumers New South Wales. And if people do have any questions um, at any time, we'd really love to hear from you. And as we said before, uh, we can't hear you, you're on mute, but please type your question into the chat box and we'll see it and we'll attempt to answer it as we go along. Um, but I, the real star of the show, of course, is Mary. So Mary, thank you so much for agreeing to be part of this today. And just building on what Sarah said and talking about some of those various areas that consumers can get involved in the ACI, could you tell us some of the things that you are involved in or have been involved in with ACI groups? Well, first of all, I, I want to say that ACI really do seem to be serious about uh, you know, receiving consumer input and using that to perhaps implement change. Now, I think that they are very good at that. Um, I've had a, a fairly wide variety of um, involvement. Um, I've been in a project on to do with uh, musculoskeletal issues and that's been in association with, with a primary health network and uh, so I've been seeing at ground level what, what is happening and designing new approaches uh, to basically either keeping folk out of hospital or else putting it off for one or two or three years through the involvement of local health providers. Um, at the same time, I have been involved in the, the bigger picture things, mm -hmm. uh, such as uh, the patient reported measures. So uh, looking at the, the uh, how we can best capture uh, the patient experience, I think, like that. And then, again, in a slightly different way, I've had the opportunity to you know, speak and give a story of, of a patient journey with, with something that had happened to me and the importance of being heard or not being heard. Mm. So it's around, over a fairly wide range. Yeah, lots of range. And I encourage people to look for the, um, some of the patient stories that are on the ACI website. They give a great... Um, variety of people's experiences. So Mary, that's so many ways that you've been involved and things that you're doing here at the ACI. Um, what first got you involved? How did you first get in contact with the ACI? Well, I, I think it was because the staff of our local, Medicare local, um, I knew some of those folk personally and they knew that I'd had osteoarthritis issues. And uh, so when the, uh, the two-year uh, project on musculoskeletal issues came up, they thought that it would be good to involve me in that. And then it's, it has flowed from there on. Um, somebody from ACI is the man manager is on, on that, uh, overseeing that project. So she invited me to tell my story and then someone else heard me and that's the way it goes. It snowballs. But all the way along, I've had the opportunity to say, no, I'm not interested in that. But the offer has been made. Okay. So mm. you felt like there's some control over Definitely. what you can and can't do and say. Mm. Definitely. So in terms of all that involvement and the various things you've been involved in, um, can you think of what are some of the, the challenges that you might have faced in, in, in coming on board and, and working with some of these groups? Well, yeah, logistics is always a challenge. It's perhaps not the answer that you were expecting, but um, it depends on where these things are being held. And I will say that ACI has been really good in, in arranging 
either taxi transport when that was needed um, or the opportunity to dial in uh, as folk are doing today with the webinar. And so, so that's one of the, 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 the basic challenges for a, for a health consumer. Um, because most of us who are involved have actually had some episodes with the health system and so you know, transports can be an issue. Uh, I think a, a potential challenge that I have had is uh, whether clinicians will really listen to what I'm saying and not just myself but other consumers. There's no doubt that is changing and I'm not just talking about a doctor, but ACI works with people like physiotherapists or podiatrists and it's been a, a change in society I think, but I am seeing that we are being heard. We can't always have what we want done immediately. So that is the, the personal challenge for us that we think, well, we know yeah, that this didn't work, yeah, therefore it should be changed. But in fact, you know, being realistic, we're down at the bottom of the pyramid. I mean, we are the foundation of the pyramid because it's about us. But um, systems need to be changed. Yeah. So therefore, the clinicians need to, to hear our voice and take it on board but also the, uh, the administrators need to. Those are, those are the major. You have one, one minor personal uh, challenge, which I think ACI meets very well, and the other is just the, the challenge of ever trying to make a change in any part of society. And Mary, I think you're, you're right. I think we're seeing uh, a lot of change and a lot of acceptance of the importance of involving consumers at all levels in health services, which is really exciting and great to see. But before we, um, uh, we were chatting before the webinar, and you, you mentioned an example of um, being in a room with uh, with clinicians, and there's some talk of consumers being excluded because they weren't seen as experts. Do you want to share that story with us uh, again? Yes. Well, um, I actually did respond fairly strongly to that because uh, for, for diseases, different diseases, the clinicians call themselves the subject matter expert. So that you're a respiratory uh, physician, therefore you're a subject matter expert about respiratory issues. So I felt that uh, Consumers are really subject matter experts about our own bodies because we know our bodies better than anybody else. We know what's working, what's not working and uh, every, everything that flows from that as far as treatment goes. So I, I think that's something that's really helpful to, for any consumer involved as a representative or speaking for consumers, that we are the subject matter experts for our own bodies. Yeah, absolutely. And also know what it's like to be on, I always say consumers know what it's like to be on the other side of the needle. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yes. And that's one thing to learn. Also, you know, experts mm. in what it's like to receive these yeah. treatments. Um, Mary, just when you made those comments, which I think are very powerful, mm. what, what was the response like? It was really interesting. It was in a room of approximately 60 people, which uh, of which there were uh, GPs, there were specialists, there were allied health professionals, and I say I was surprised that there was a lot of clapping. Oh, good. And it has been talked about since. Now, I think it's probably because I said it even more gently than I've said it to you because I think this is the other aspect of being heard is to not be aggressive. Um, I find that if you, uh, this was not a suggestion, but usually I make it as a suggestion, have you thought of. 
Um, but this one was a definitely loud comment, but done in a gentle fashion. And it was heard and it was obviously received. And um, I've seen the flow on from that. That's yeah. fantastic. And mind you, see, there was humour involved. Yeah, it was expressed in a humorous way. And I think consumers need to use every tool they can to be heard. To get the message across. Yes. No, that's great. Right. And so, Mary, even the, those challenges that you've mentioned, it sounds like you have found some creative ways and using humour um, and things like that to, to overcome those challenges. But I'm also interested to know, what are some of the benefits you feel you've seen from being involved um, as a consumer representative and with, with ACI groups? Oh, look, Anthony, there's no doubt that um, people are now listening. Yeah, not everybody, but they are listening. And I'm seeing, it's easier to see at a project level, such as with, with anything to do with falls or um, physiotherapy or treatment to prevent surgery. So at, at, the, at the smaller scale, you can, I have seen programs modified uh, or processes modified. I've actually seen some wonderful collaboration between a local health district, private practitioners and a, a primary health network all working together. And that encourages me to think that it's going to happen a bit more slowly on a larger scale. Because if it happens in a local area and it's working, then it's going to be picked up in other areas. And that's the advantage of the ACI because it's statewide and they can encourage the taking up of something that has worked in one area through a project grant that they've been involved with. So people and consumers own experience locally mm. can have an impact on what could turn into statewide projects. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's quite well, exciting. Um, so, um, a lot of the people who will be watching this um, yeah. will be people who are new to ACI or thinking about becoming on, coming on board a, an ACI network or, or team or project. Do you have any advice for people who are thinking about getting involved in that way? Well, I think the first thing is to be involved in something that you're interested in mm. because yeah, you know, sometimes you don't feel like going to a meeting or going on a teleconference. So if it's something that you're interested in, I won't go as far as to say passionate about, but of course that's passion even helps even if you've got that. Yes. Um, so I, that, that, that's the first thing. I think the next thing uh, is to take advantage of any training that is offered to you. And obviously this is the beginnings of some training, this, um, this recorded webinar. But I know that um, ACI does collaborate with uh, Health Consumers New South Wales in training. And I think that um, if it's there, take hold of it. Mind you, there's training elsewhere as well. So yeah, take hold of any, tra any training. Um, I think the other thing is don't be daunted by the fact that you're there with a health professional. Um, health professionals know their subject. But as I've said before, you know your subject. Yeah, so yeah, different subject matter experts. And so the other thing is to be um, to be courteous, yeah, show respect to the others because you expect to receive respect. No, yeah, that's for a starter anyway. No, yes. and I think that issue of respect is yeah. uh, good advice for all of us in it, in almost any situation, yeah. but particularly mm. as, as uh, consumers are working in an area where we want respect and to be, mm. to be treated with respect. Um, and what about um, the, when you came in and when people are coming in, um, Sometimes, particularly if we are passionate about something and we want to sort of get in there and change the world, 
Um, what would you have? Do you have any advice or suggestions about um, about that? Well, uh, I would say hasten slowly. Um, again, people won't hear you if you're shouting. You, you have to. Um, you, you actually have to earn respect generally, and they, uh, whether it's with administrators, clinicians, or even other consumers, mm. you need to, to earn the respect by um, the way you approach it. And uh, I'm sorry, I can think of no other way but to be gentle in the way, firm but gentle, but also based on evidence. Now, obviously, if you are wanting to talk to a clinician, you must have the backup for what you're, mm -hmm. you're saying. Um, it, it, there needs to be caution in how you talk about your own experience. Uh, to me, uh, my experience in, or experience of others that I know informs what I'm saying. But clinicians do not like to hear you say, well, when I was in hospital, this happened. And so I think be very cautious in the way you express things because the prime thing is you want to change. It's, you're not looking for kudos for yourself. You're wanting to have something changed in the system. So basically use anything in the bag of tricks to be so, heard. So in terms of that... Uh, Bag of tricks. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, like, yes, use your own story, but there's limitations around your, your own story, and knowing what other people's experience is is important. How do you go fi about finding out what other people's experiences of the health services are that can help you in this work? Well, for a start, most of us have networks. I'll call it. Networks, because that's the jargon, it's not the words that consumers use. We say we have friends. We, we, we belong to groups. You know, it might be a knitting group. It might be the, the golf, whatever it is. Um, so chat with people in what you do, you know, as you go about things. I, I honestly, you know, I talk with taxi drivers because I, I, I'm quite frequently offered the opportunity to have my taxi fare pay. And they say, what are you, where are you going? What are you doing? And I start to explain, and then I ask them questions. And it's, it's important to talk to people who aren't involved in health, mm -hmm. because um, they, they know all the words. They, no matter the fact that you're a cardiologist and you're having a neurology, operation, you're still in a position of power and knowledge. You need to talk to people who don't know about the health system. Mm -hmm. So yeah, use, use your friends. You've got a family. You've got me. With, most of us have an extended family. You know, there's aunts, uncles, even if we don't have children, we've got cousins. No, absolutely. And I mean, I think some of those other networks that are useful too that are some of the networks of uh, consumer organisations and other people involved in the health service as well. Yes. So, um, yeah, really, really important to talk to people, not LinkedIn, but sometimes people in uh, in consumer organisations have similar or other experiences that are yes. valuable too. Well, well, as you know, this is you know, I'm on the board of Health Consumers New South Wales, and yeah. I'm allowed to give a plug for that as oh. we're co-sponsoring this webinar. But um, there are people there who can perhaps point you and out, link you up with others, yeah. or that sort of thing. Um, so that is that is you know the, the organisation for health consumers in the state, which is helpful. Yeah. Mm. Right. So um, yes, and you know, as an employee of Health Consumers New South Wales, we're always happy to talk to consumers and help people make make those links with with other people who are involved uh, as a consumer representative or, or in other areas. Um, so Mary, one of the things too that sounds like when um, you're involved as a representative on, in, on committees is um, the change that happened. Um, 
it's not always instantaneous, is it? I was just thinking, when Sarah was showing us those great slides and those maps of the system and what ACI does, they're very complex. It looks like a lot of moving parts. So um, what's your experience of sort of trying to get positive change when there's so many, you know, we've got such a big organisation to deal with? Yeah, look, I, I think the, the best way to understand it is to think about going out fishing in a tinny and you can turn your tinny around quickly, immediately, when you see something in the distance. But if you're on the Queen Mary, it is a very slow process to turn that around. Mm -hmm. So we can get change, we can get gains at the, at the pointy end, which is actually where it's really touching things. <laughs> But to get changes in administration, yet the further up that complicated diagram we go, then I think the slower it will be. But I have every confidence that the changes that have been started are going to continue. I think the whole of society is starting to listen to small people. They're listening, not always responding. But I think change has started and it's going to continue and it's it's starting down at the at the pointy end where the tinny is. Yeah. Thanks. No, I, I think um, yes, change has started and actually all that change has been built on the work mm -hmm. that over the years people like you, Mary, and like some of our other colleagues who've been doing this for a long time have been involved in and uh, we're all the, the old cliche is that we stand on the shoulders of giants, but I think we really do in the consumer movement because we're starting to see change now that some people, decades of work, chipping away, we're finally starting to see some action. So look, Mary, just in terms of um, maybe starting to wrap up the, the, the webinar and, and the interview, I'm just wondering if you've got any other words or if there's anything you think that you'd really like people uh, who are thinking of becoming involved to know that we haven't mentioned or anything important about the ACIOB consumer representative that you'd like to leave people with? Well, I, I'm assuming that everybody who's watching this is already involved with the ACI, but if at any time somebody has, uh, is not yet involved with the ACI in any capacity, don't wait to be asked. I, I would say um, have a look at the website, have a look at what's offering and as, as I think it was mentioned earlier, dip your toe in and see what it's like. Um, I think that perhaps you'll find that you will be more comfortable in either a small group or in a, a, a more a, a policy group, but you know if you're a, a an action person or a, or a policy type person. So know yourself and uh, give it a go. I think that's the most important thing. Don't be daunted by the fact that you don't actually know anything about what's happening or the system. Yet you are a, a subject matter expert and you will have friends who are subject matter experts and it's really important to that voice is who to give it a go. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thanks, thanks, Mary. Now, please, as we've always said, uh, if you have any questions, now's the time um, to please uh, send them through to us and, and use the, the chat box on your screen to do that. Uh, Sarah has a question and now we can't see her. She is in the room. So, Sarah, did you have something you want to pass on? Yes, and I'd just really like to thank Mary and Anthony for this interview. I think um, it's been amazing hearing from you and really, really thank you for your words today. And I, I, I think they'll be very helpful to those who have joined today and those who will be in the future. My question was just in relation to um, the journey that you've been on, Mary, throughout um, your being a consumer member and um, your reflections on how do you maintain your energy and enthusiasm over that journey. <laughs> uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit like a, uh, a series of hills, you know, the energy is up there sometimes. 
uh, for me, as I think for many consumers who are involved, mm -hmm. there are health issues. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, strangely enough, my I'm re-energized by being involved. So I will go out of this room and on my way home, and I will be feeling great mm -hmm. uh, because I feel that I have been, um, yeah, I've been doing something constructive. I think the other thing, and, and I was reflecting as you were starting to talk, and it's not a direct answer mm -hmm. to your question. The other way I'm energized is when I see some results. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've uh, been involved with patient reported outcomes and also patients reporting their experiences, which is actually as important mm -hmm. as to what has happened rather than what they can now do afterwards. Mm -hmm. And because I've been having medical tests, I, I'm doing exactly what I said I shouldn't do, mm -hmm. uh, talking about myself, I am seeing the very positive um, use of patient reported measures, uh, both for diagnosis mm -hmm. and for seeing how things are working out. And I think if there was just one thing that you were pushing, I think it's this, the whole matter of reporting on, on what the patient's response is yep. to what's happening. So that makes you excited and that gives you your energy back. Mm. That's fantastic. Mm. That's fantastic. Well, look, we might, I think we've sort of reached a point, and I know that um, we're coming up to um, um, sort of about 40 minutes of the, of the webinar. So I think we've reached a point where we might move on from the interview. And so thank you so much, Mary. Um, this has been exciting and it's been energising for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so lucky to work with consumers like Mary and a lot of others who um, your energy and enthusiasm is infectious. So thank you. Um, I know Sarah had a few words that she wanted to, to wrap up with. Um, and I'd just like to say that on behalf of Health Consumers New South Wales, we'd also like to thank the ACI, not just for involving us and including us in the training and the webinar today, but also for your work in engaging with consumers. Uh, I think the ACI is really is a leader in uh, consumer engagement in New South Wales health. And, you know, you're not just talking the talk, you're walking the walk. So. So, so thanks, Sarah. So I'll just uh, swap chairs with Sarah again and ask her to, to uh, just wrap up the rest of the webinar. Thank you, Anthony, and thank you, everyone, for bearing with us while we um, do a bit of musical chairs. Um, we really thank you for your time today, your ongoing involvement and interest in the ACI. Um, I just wanted to follow up on a couple of points around additional resources and support for you um, that are available through the ACI and various other mechanisms. I'll just start the slideshow again. Oh, apologies, we're just having a little bit of a whirring. Okay. Apologies for this last minute technical problems. Um, I just really wanted to uh, refer you to the fact that Health Consumers New South Wales exists as an organisation um, to provide a collaborative forum by which consumers can get engaged and also that the Consumers Health Forum of Australia also exists and they have a really useful online training program for consumers that gives a good introduction to the um, Australian healthcare system and, and the role of consumer representatives in the Australian healthcare system. As Mary mentioned, there's also the opportunity to get involved in your local health services um, as part of the local health districts. So the ACI does have an opportunity to link you in with your local health district if that's something that you'd like to work at at a more um, service level. And the local health districts have a consumer and community participation manager who is also responsible for um, helping to support consumers engaged in their local health services. As I mentioned at the ACI, we've got the patient experience and consumer engagement team here to help. But if you're involved in an individual network, um, then your network manager is your first port of call for any questions or concerns about how that network works or how that project or activity works. 
And as I mentioned, we've also got the ACI Consumer Council. So if you're interested in being linked into that group, we can facilitate that as well. We are really keen to improve. Um, although we think that we're doing a good job in this area, we always know that we can do more and we're always willing to explore options to better support consumers that are involved. So we'd really love to hear from you if you've got any suggestions um, about what we can do better. And um, you can contact me directly um, through the ACI or through the ACI uh, website. And so the slide pack will include my details and will include the Peace Teams details and the ACI website details. So you can go and um, look at that after. The slide pack does also include some additional resources, the training program that I alluded to that Consumers Health Forum runs, as well as some other toolkits that you might like to access. So really encourage you to go and have a look around and see what you can find. And thank you really all so much again for your time and commitment. We, we know that you are um, very busy and you've got your own lives to lead, so we really value your input and your ongoing support for our work. And thank you again to Health Consumers New South Wales for supporting us with this. There is a short evaluation that you will be prompted to complete once you exit from the session today. Uh, there will be some couple of questions that pop up when you exit the webinar. So we would love you to complete them if you have the um, opportunity. So we will end the webinar now and we look forward to continuing to work with you and thank you again for your time. That's great. Thank you everyone. Thanks. Anthony, are you there, Sarah? Yeah, we're here. Can you hear us? Yeah. 